A massive thank you to Salmon, Foxy, Ericus, Nick and Black X for subscribing to the channel. If you want to be featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round one of season seven of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we're here back to kickstart the finale of what has been one of the most insane series I think I've ever done here on YouTube. Of course, if you missed that preseason testing that went live yesterday, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. But a massive, massive thank you to all of you guys as well. We've now hit 43 thousand subscribers you know if you're not already please do leave a like and get yourself subscribed as well for more f1 2021 content you know we're getting towards f1 2022 now you know the last season of this my team career mode the full 23 race calendar and like i mentioned in yesterday's video as well this first race will also be a 100 percent race accompanied by four other venues across the season so yeah really really excited to be diving back into it today of course major rule changes as well coming in a whole new level of parity you can see there on the vehicle comparison just how close most of the top teams are as well so things are certainly going to get exciting over the course of this final season max verstappen alongside me at 212 motorsport as well things are going to get very very interesting then but yeah for the final time then here in f1 my team let's dive in here to the Bahrain Grand Prix. Formula One is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favorite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available, whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. Right, well, here we are then, back for season seven of our F1 2021 My Team Career Mode then. And as always, I'm just going to try and show you guys my first lap here from Sakira. Of course, not many rule changes have gone on, but every year you know the car stop handling the characteristics do change around ever so slightly there as we try to get the thing tipped in to turn one. But yeah, of course, 23 races this season. Going to make things very, very interesting. And of course, a 100% race here to kickstart the year in Sakia. Really not too sure in terms of strategy. I think this is why I quite like the idea of doing some of these 100% races as well. You know, you guys said after the race we did at Imola last season, it's something you'd like to see as well. So I thought, you know, let's let's deliver on that one and try and give you guys a few over the course of the campaign. But of course, Bahrain has often been a track for us where qualifying has never particularly been our strong suit. Of course, the AI can just immediately come out the gate and be rapid over qualifying it takes me sort of a few races to sort of learn the car everything like that but i'm sure we will get into the groove with this thing as the season progresses there but as we head up the hill towards the end of my first practice program oh, ever so slight lift there i was just worried the back end was going to break away from me that is a lot of curve though as we head down in towards the final couple of corners of the lap though a long way down on the delta at the moment we're going to drain the battery as we try and find time up towards the line there as we head out of the final corner then really try and get early on the throttle first lap isn't quite going to be there but we weren't far we away up the pace we're not hitting our target we'll need to rerun the program if we don't get the time delta back in the green of course don't really need the r d at this stage of f1 2021 but we'll try and chase that purple score just wanted to add as well the car again does look stunning here back in orange once more you know the gold livery last year i think was brash it's really the way we're going to describe it. But yeah, back with the orange. It looks good, especially when we get a nice purple score. Coming towards the end then of my qualifying simulation run. we got Mick Schumacher, of course, his first race in green down at Aston Martin. Really does give me Jordan 1991 vibes with Michael Schumacher. And a job well done. We got some excellent data with that run. So come on back to the garage and I can talk you through the numbers. But yeah, as I was saying there, yeah. A Schumacher in green, certainly, yeah, is, is a bit of a throwback here on F1 2021. But we go purple at the end then of our FP2 runs. Purple score as well on the qualifying sim run. Let's get into qualifying here from Bahrain. Right, well, here we are then. Qualifying day from the Bahrain GP. Really, really intrigued to see how we're going to get on in this one. Out in Q1, 
fairly sort of standard, both Williams, both Haas there. One of the Aston Martins of Mick Schumacher, unfortunately, and then the Alfa Romeo of um, Jack Aitken. Sorry, just trying to remember me drivers there. But yeah, qualifying looking very, very close though here in Sakia. So we'll have to wait and see as to how we get on. First run in Q2 is going to be done on the set of softs that I used in the first qualifying session. But we're going to be needing a 22, I think, to make it into Q3. Things, yeah, are looking mighty tight towards the front. Sergio Perez goes fastest on a 22.4. Now is his real big shot at trying to launch himself into a world championship contention here. Because, of course, yeah, no Max Verstappen at the team anymore. Sergio Perez is now the number one down there. But George Russell, I'm sure, is going to rustle his feathers as the year goes on, if you'll pardon the pun. But up towards the start-finish line then. First lap, 23.6 there. Four tenths away from Max. But... We were on the old set, so it's not the end of the world there. We can definitely go out for a second run on a fresh set. And hopefully, yeah, try and dip towards those 22s. But Red Bull are looking fast over one lap. Right, last ditch attempt then to try and make it out of Q2. We're currently down in the drop zone in P16. So we need a good lap here on the fresh set of tyres. Game reckons there's about another 7 tenths worth of delta. And we did make a couple of mistakes on that first run as well. So fingers crossed we're now going to be able to get the 22 in. That we need there. Slam on the anchors at the 100 meter board. This thing, it's the brakes are like hitting a brick wall in towards Tower 1 there. It is just phenomenal. You know, we haven't really got to try and savor the last of these F1 2021 cars because, of course, the 2022 cars aren't going to be as fast anyway. And then, of course, yeah, maxed out car as well. This thing has been an absolute joy to drive over the last couple of seasons there. Threading the needle down the hill, though. So much grip absolutely everywhere as we go purple through sector one. Struggle to get it slowed down enough in towards the hairpin, but still able to put the power down super early on the exit there, and then just trying to trail break our way in through turn nine and turn ten there. Not the best run in the world through there, but we are finding pace as the lap has unfolded here. Just need to concentrate through the end of sector two. So just run a little bit wide there as we head up the hill. Oh, no! No, 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 no! I cannot believe it. I said we had to be careful through the exit of Sector 2 there. And we just, I think just, nicked the rear wheel on the curb. And that'll be us out of qualifying here in the Bahrain Grand Prix. Not the way we wanted, would have wanted to try and defend. Oh, dearie me. I'm sure the team will be able to get that fixed, to be honest. I'm amazed it didn't rip off a wheel from the car as well. There is everyone else. I don't know why. I'm off the circuit. Why they're all slowing down. On their last ditch attempts there. But heartbreak to end qualifying here from the Bahrain Grand Prix. May as well get on with it. Otherwise, we're going to get a penalty for blocking there. But we are out of qualifying. And so is Max Verstappen. Both 2 and 2 motorsport cars. They're out at the end of Q2. That was not what we needed. Well, there we go then. Heartbreak at the end of Q2 for the Bahrain Grand Prix there. George Russell and Sergio Perez 1-2 there. But, our, well, they're probably going to be our main championship rivals over the course of the year, both myself and Max Verstappen out in Q2. I mean, we were on probably for about P5, P6, had I not made that mistake right towards the end of the run. Guan Yu Zhou's also picked up a five-place grid penalty. No idea what he's done. He got an illegal blocking on someone. Um, but yeah, both cars then out in Q2 for the Bahrain GP. I guess we're just going to have to grit our teeth. Hopefully the alternate strategy can help us out. And I think we're just going to have to try and get on with it. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 
thousand completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years, and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading, as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself, as well as thousands of others, trust Bybit as their crypto. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best at turn one, of course, and then another soon into turn four. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into the tight left-hander of turn 10. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. and They've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. It's Sergio Perez on pole position today, edging out Lando Norris, who'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Stroll, Sainz, Charles Leclerc, and Giovinazzi, Sonoda, Ricardo, Verstappen, and George Russell, Bottas, Lundgaard, Esteban Ocon, and Joe. Mazepin, Mr. Monaco, Jack Aitken, and Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Eilert, Giotto, and Robert Schwartzman. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Right, well, here we are then on the grid for the final season of our F1 My Team career mode. And here we are then back in Sakia for a 100% race. In terms of strategy today, as always, we're going to take all the fuel out of the car there. Game reckons we can save six laps worth of fuel as the race goes on. So, fingers crossed, that should give us a little bit of extra performance. In terms of strategy, I'm going to start on the mediums, but then we're going to try and do two sets of the soft compound tyres to see us through to the end of the GP. I mean, a safety car, there's a fair chance we'll get one of those today. Um, but, you know, we've got a fast race car underneath us still. Starting P16, we're definitely way out of position here for the start here in Bahrain. So, you know, we don't want to make any crucial errors early on. You know, we learnt that lesson the hard way last year in the 100% race we did at Imola, uh, where, yeah, unfortunately we got involved in a couple of incidents early on, which really stopped us from fighting right at the very front there. So just going to try and keep it clean and tidy in towards turn one. You know, Bahrain, you know, we can pick off cars one by one down the huge straights as well. So fingers crossed today we can just have a good run out here to kickstart. Season seven, the last dance here on F1 2021. Can we get a good start here in Bahrain? Going to be lights out and away we go. And actually, consider we're on the medium tyres there. Not the worst start in the world as we just get swamped a little bit down in towards the first corner. Robert Schwartzman. Holy moly. That was ascending towards someone there. As we're just going to get the nose completely chopped off. And when all is said, number down to last. Out of the first corner there. But we have still got the whole front wing intact. And that is the most important thing there. As both Haskars, all the heroics, down towards turn one. But we are going to have to try and start picking off cars nice and early there. I could just tell Callum Eilert was never going to give me the room on the inside there, so just thought it would be more sensible to back out of that one, but looks like it is still Sergio Perez who leads the way here on lap one, as we're going to send it back up the inside of Nicholas Latifi, still at Williams, after all these years of the My Team series, but yeah, four cars from four different teams in the top four on the grid, looks like that stayed the same there, Sergio Perez had a Lando Norris there, and then we've got, I think, Lance Stroll ahead of one of the Ferraris there, they're still running fourth and fifth place there. Max Verstappen got elevated up into P9 after a couple of penalties for a few other drivers there. George Russell ended up P10. Not quite sure what happened to him but as we head up the hill towards the end of lap one, there, of course, a lot of learning to be done today as well. The card does feel pretty similar to last year's Challenger but, of course, there are still a few nuances 
and everything like that. I saw Luca Giotto in his first Formula 1 race there, a little bit early on the brakes down in towards the final corner there, almost into the back of the Haas car here, but as we head back down the long start finish straight here, we've got plenty of battery, of course, to use as well. We're going to have a look towards the inside, and a nice end there, just get the car slowed down on the apex, run him out, and we will now re-inherit P20 then of the GP. So already starting to pick off the cars we need to, but still, yeah, 56 more laps ahead of us as Perez already trying to break free at the front. All over the back now of Cullum Eilat as we come towards the end of lap two. Sergio Perez, like we said, trying to streak away in the distance, but a big lock up for Eilat down in towards the final corner. That actually threw me off a little bit at the final turn as I thought he'd run a bit DRS deep. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. DRS now enabled, but we're going to pull off exactly the same move as what we did to Luca Giotto just one lap ago. Eilat, though, he's going to try and fight back at us. That Williams isn't as slow as the Haas car still, but we do make the move work, and now we've got a little bit of a gap up to Jack Aitken, but yeah, just trying to fire up these mediums early on here in this GP, and try not to over push them as well, you know, a small thing now can have big repercussions in a longer race like this, you know, the old theory of when a butterfly flaps its wings, we've just got to keep every possible door open for us this afternoon. Making slow but steady progress then up towards the back of this next gaggle of cars though. Jack Aitken just sitting in the DRS of Nikita Mazepin. I was pleasantly surprised though by the pace Antonio Giovinazzi set in at qualifying. That Alpine, yeah, is not a particularly slow car in at some capable hands. And we said they might not score points this year and it looks like they might already say no to that in just round one of the year. There are Schwarzman now goes side by side with Zhou Guan Yu up the hill out of the first couple of corners here. Mazepin now, it's going to be the two Russian drivers going side by side towards the top of the hill here. Who is going to come out on top in this one? Schwartzman trying to hang on. Mazepin might just pull off the move though around the outside as myself and Jack Aitken are kind of just having to sit back and watch this battle unfold at the moment. But we desperately, desperately need to try and get past these guys as they are costing us a lot of time now as we head out of the first sector here. Fingers crossed we can start picking them off one by one again. Oh, we've got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. I think it's a car behind us. It's Callum Eilat out of the Bahrain Grand Prix there. So not what the young Englishman would have wanted in his first race back here of Season 7. And Williams, yeah, very, very worrying reliability for them as well. Callum Eilat out of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Just six pilot. laps in. They're retiring from the race. Thanks, Jeff. We've just sort of spoke about that, mate. But, yeah, poor old Callum Eilat is now. We need to try and line up a move on Jack Aitken here. But he's trying to close in on Robert Schwartzman as well. Just tip it in nicely out of the final corner there. Get on the ERS really, really early as well there. Activate the DRS. Schwartzman's still got it, though, from the cars we'll in front. As Aitken would rather go defensive. Why are you doing this to us, Jack Aitken, as we head back down towards turn one? We're both going to have a look at the inside of Schwartzman. I don't like where that's going. A big contact between Jack Aitken and Robert Schwartzman. I don't think there was a huge amount Schwartzman could have done in that situation, but he might have picked up some front wing damage. We both navigate the Haas, but, yeah, not a fan of the Alfa Romeo's antics. We really need to start making a bit more progress in this Grand Prix, but I'm starting to wonder... When we're going to see the first cars into the pits as well, there is Lando Norris is causing an absolute shrilly train at the moment. Jack Aitken now trying to close in on Mazepin. Five, nine point zero seconds. Only nine seconds behind our new Formula One teammate there. As so we're going to have a look at the inside of Jack in towards Turn um, One, and we will say thank you very much. We will now have P17 then in this GP. We're not even back to where we started still, but slow but steady progress. Starting to struggle a little bit with some front locking, but we're running pretty low brake bias anyway. I'll try to try and tweak it forward ever so slightly more, see if 51 works. Mazepin breaking very, very early through the final corner, so we get a good look at the Alpine gearbox there, but both him and myself are going to have the DRS on Zhou Guan Yu, so we might see some three wide back down towards turn one there. Mazepin's going to go really defensive once more there, but move around a lot in the braking zone. The Russian driver locks up there, back down towards turn one, and not happy with that through the first corner, but is he going to be able to get the run up the hill on Zhou Guan Yu? Doesn't look like he is, so it's like he's trying to defend for Zhou Guan Yu as well there, but yeah, not a fan of that one. It's Jack Aitken, no idea what he's doing 
in the rearview mirror. But yeah, we're just going to have to reset and try again the end of this lap. Starting to see a few more of the AI struggling on their set of soft compound tyres there. Joe Brandu wriggling his way up the hill in towards the final sector of the lap here. And you can see Nikita Mazepin now really struggling as well. As we're going to try and look to the outside in towards the final corner here. Go nice and late on the brakes at Soma where we've often been a little bit stronger. And the AI is not going to be able to put the power down on the exit. Oh, we get a big snap of oversteer though at the final corner. So it is going to be a drag race. Back down towards Town 1 here. Myself versus Mazepin in towards the first corner. We're just going to hold him a little bit to the inside there as we're going to try and break around the outside of Guan Yu Zhou. A little bit wide, but we'll have the inside for T2. And we will say thank you very much. P16 is now ours. As fingers crossed, the next couple of cars aren't going to have DRS. So they should be a little bit easier to pick off. Actually, it looks like Mick Schumacher has got some quite big issues then in this GP because he is dropping back into the clutches of myself and Zhou Guan Yu at actually rather an alarming rate there as we're going to try and do all the same move we did just one lap ago there. That time around we got very, very close to contact with Zhou Guan Yu but we might be close enough to get a run on Mick Schumacher as well as we head back down towards somewhere there. The Aston Martin driver clearly struggling a little bit on his rubber there. Goes very, very early on the brakes and we will go right around the outside in a similar move to what we did to Nikita Maspin as well. So back up now into P14 now. Four seconds the gap up to Christian Lungard. As now Zhou Guan Yu is going to try and look past Mick Schumacher as well. Looks like he's pulled that one off. So Schumacher clearly with some issues then early on in this GP. Perhaps he's just shredded his tyres. Or we might see more issues for Mercedes power. So there we go. End of lap 12. Got our first couple of cars into the pit lane then. That's Antonio Giovinazzi and Charles Leclerc. So they're both going to be going on to mediums now. Interested to see whether we're going to see the AI do two synths of mediums or two synths of softs here. Because I think it's going to have to be one or the other. don't think we're going to see anyone really try and three-stop this. But yeah, Lando Norris though still holding up quite a big train there. Looks like one of the McLarens is dropping back from it and forming their own train. But this could really play into our hands later on in the afternoon. Just got to keep our head down. So there we go. A load more cars into the pit lane. Lando Norris, uh, Jack. Uh, Jack Russell? George Russell, that is <laughs> not a good nickname. Uh, and then Carlos Sainz as well there as we head back down towards Turn 1. But yeah, at the moment though, just picking up places. Finally now inside the top 10 for the first time today. The gap to Lungard still coming down a healthy margin each lap. Oh, there we go. Lap 15. We've had a couple of laps where no one's pit. So maybe there are some alternate strategies coming in then here in Bahrain. But looks like we're going to see pretty much everyone else into the box over the next couple of laps. So we should inherit the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. There is Sergio Perez coming back out on a set of these soft compound tyres. So he's going to try and double stint them and then go mediums, I'd imagine, to the end of the GP. But it's going to be a long old way to go on a medium set of tyres here. We're going to pit around lap 25, lap 26, depending on how these tyres hang on. They're still feeling pretty good at the moment as we actually just set a new PB for the GP there. But... Yeah, Perez only six seconds back, so he's probably going to be all over our gearbox pretty soon. As there we go. Apparently not everyone's still opting to pit then in this GP. Draw, uh, sorry, Yuki Tsunoda into the pits there, but still Max Verstappen leads the way ahead of Bottas, Ocon, and myself. As Yeah, Perez is just taking time out. I mean, hand over fist. We are probably going to have to try and defend from him, though, as best as possible. Because any time gain now could be a huge help later on in the afternoon. Things I never expected to see, Jack Aitken. Oh, Fastest lap in an Alfa Romeo. Oh, so there we go. Verstappen in. Um, we're going to see Bottas knock on in as well. Max Verstappen then first ever pit stop for 212 Motorsport. Fingers crossed it runs smoothly. So we're still setting new PBs here in this GP. Perez, though, goes a whole lot quicker. Yeah, it's going to be probably a matter of two laps or so before Checo's all over my gearbox. But yeah, lap 18, though, pretty much at one third's distance now. Here in Bahrain. Oh, Perez goes even faster. The gap down to 1.3. He might be able to try and send it past me at the end of this one. But we're trying to just throw as much dirty air as we can onto that Red Bull. Whoa! Sergio Perez there immediately. Trying to look towards the inside at the top of the hill there. Was not expecting a lunge by the Mexican there. But he is looking in control 
so far of the Bahrain Grand Prix where the first car is really actually had to battle all day long there. But as we head out of the final corner, are we going to be able to do anything against Sergio? We're going to go a bit defensive back down towards Cell 1, but he's just going to sail around me. Nothing. Nothing we can do as we head in towards the first corner there. I'm definitely not going to be able to match him on the brakes. And Sergio Perez re-inherits the lead then of the Bahrain Grand Prix. 11.2 seconds. And I think, yeah, Checo's just going to check off into the distance here as Stroll and Verstappen now making good progress as well on their meet, on their second set of soft compound tyres. Going to be interesting to see how they hang on later on in the afternoon as a lot of guys have jumped onto mediums and then we're not losing so much. But Sergio Perez, yeah, absolutely in control early on here. And yeah, despite Perez making a move and despite us going green that lap, he still pulled out another 1.3 seconds. A new strategy Ooh. is available on the MFD. Well, Nikita Mazepin out then of this Grand Prix. Seemingly out of nowhere. Low, Looks like a reliability error for the Alpine. But that's brought us out of safety car here on lap 22. We may as well box now. And the Got team do reckon front. we can get to the end doing the double soft, double soft stint. So this might leapfrog us right the way up inside the top 10 here. An absolute lifeline has been thrown out to us. And what a time for it to happen, pretty much. Not quite perfect, but pretty close to it in this Bahrain GP. We're going to box in the end of this one. Where are we going to re-emerge? Around in the final corner, then about to come into the pit lane. Looks like Sergio Perez has done the same as well. Make sure we get it slowed down nicely on the anchors. And yeah, how many cars are we going to see then into the pits at the end of this lap? You know, could we see Stroll? Could we see Verstappen in as well? You know, if we see a whole host of cars, no, they are not. So Sergio Perez going on to another set of the soft compound tyres, so he's definitely going to be boxing again then in this oh, GP. 2.6 seconds stop for us, isn't too shabby either. Fingers crossed we can come out ahead of this gaggle of Formula 1 cars as well. Okay, you only have to stop once now. We are going to be racing on pit there. exit, and I think... Oh no, we don't get the place over Charles Leclerc there. there I thought no we might just... The car period. But we have now re-emerged then inside the top 10 of this GP, and we should be on a quicker strategy right the way through, that has potentially opened up a whole lot of options for us. But back to go green flag racing then once more here from Bahrain and this has opened up a whole can of worms because of course Sergio Perez, okay, let's get ready to go racing we're going to get the whole spiel the from Jeff um, but yeah, Sergio Perez though of course is going to have to then stop again no onto a set of medium tyres, so we're really at the moment on a more ideal strategy than Checo here, but we got Lance Stroll who leads the way ahead of Verstappen and Yuki Sonoda as we head out of this final corner. Let's go racing once again then. Try to judge it. And this time around, it looks like we have. So we're going to be all alongside Charles Leclerc. But that Ferrari is so fast down the straights as we head back down towards someone. Then no, Charles, you're not defending the inside from me. We won't be too greedy there. We'll just take the move from Leclerc as we've got more yellow flags out. It's just about the Constantina and up in towards Cell 1 there. Doesn't look like anyone's had any issues off the restart. So, yeah, two mechanical failures already in this GP there. Charles Leclerc's going to come back at me. We're giving the room at the top of the hill. We're giving a bit of a squeeze as well. But we are now back up into P9 then. I guess this is now really the opportunity in this GP where we need to try and stretch this car's legs. Really see what this V7 Challenger can do. So we're going to try and get the up and under on Esteban Ocon, of course, no DRS just yet once more in the GP, but haven't really seen much of Aston Martin over the last couple of years, but we are going to be able to slot past the young, no longer really a young Frenchman this late on in the game, but we do move past him, back him into P8 then. Next stop, George Russell. Oh, I want to see what he can do in that Red Bull, as Sergio Perez in the other Red Bull tries to look past Sainz. Back down towards Cell 1 there, Checo knows he's got to make moves quickly, and that's one he's ticked off immediately we say that. We might be able to get a run up the hill here on George. Are we going to be able to go for a send up the inside? He's on medium, so absolutely yes. As Bottas now takes the place from Carlos as well. The smooth operator might just be getting a little bit hot under the collar here. Starting again on those medium tyres there. And we're going to make it three moves in one lap on Carlos Sainz there. As we say thank you very much. We'll have P6 and we'll leave those medium runners in the dust. I mean, yeah, Sergio and I at the moment, we've still got the two fastest cars in Formula 1. We're two of the only drivers right at the front on a fresh set of tyres here. It's around the outside of Bottas we go in towards the final corner. 
Oh, the fin there again. Tried to keep the nose in, but we just about hook it up around the outside. And that's three places gained on one lap here. I'm back up into P5 now. Okay, the stewards have now enabled DRS. DRS is now online. We could be looking at an absolute dogfight pretty soon, as there's going to be five cars, all with good pace, battling it out for the lead. Right, first lap then with DRS re-enabled. Are we going to see Verstappen make a move on lap stroll as we set a 25-9? Oh boy, this car is faster when you get it hooked up there, but Verstappen to the outside of Lance Stroll. I think there was a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact between the pair of them through turn one, and Stroll will hang on firm, as now Verstappen under pressure from Sonoda. We're pulling that a second lap here. Look at this, three wide towards the top of the hill between our teammate and the two Mercs there. Stroll gets caught out on the inside there. Verstappen now takes the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix as we get close towards the halfway stage here. Imagine if we'd done a 50% race, this would be the penultimate lap here, but Verstappen and Yuki Sonoda still going side by side at the bottom of the hill there. Sergio Perez and I just watching in awe as this all unfolds there as Verstappen hangs on now into the lead of the Grand Prix there for our teammate, but we need to try and move past Sergio as soon as possible here in this Grand Prix there. Perez aware of it. He's going to go defensive down the back straight. We're going to look to the inside, dart back to the outside in towards the next corner there, squeeze him out on the apex. And we will, by the looks of it, make the move there. We've got more yellow flags out further back. It's an Alfa Romeo now going slowly. I think they just ran deep down at the hairpin. But it's all kicking off here off this safety car restart as we get towards the halfway stage of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Now I think Stroll might just have a tiny little bit of front wing damage. They're breaking a little bit early in towards the final corner. But how is this Mercedes top end speed going to be out of the final turn there? We should be able to get the runner, Sonoda. Might be able to do the same to our teammate. Mercedes versus 212. And it looks like 212 are going to come out on top as we head back down towards turn one here. This race is just gone mad. Oh, we got more yellow flags out. Someone's got issues then here in Bahrain. Who is it now? Oh, it's Sergio Perez. By the looks of it, Perez out of the Bahrain Grand Prix. So the drama just keeps on coming here in Bahrain. Sergio Perez out as we're going to try and make a move around the outside of Sonoda down at the final corner there and just like that the Red Bull who dominated the early stages here in Bahrain out of the Grand Prix and suddenly 2-1-2 Motorsport we started 9th and 16th here we're 1-2 what is happening here in Bahrain and this was the battle I think everyone was expecting to occur here in Bahrain Max Verstappen versus myself I mean we are on slightly fresher tyres on a slightly better strategy at the moment, the safety car has absolutely clutched this up for me at the halfway stage of the race. But Verstappen, I'm sure, is still going to just defend every position for all it's worth here. Battling for the lead with our teammate. We've had it a few times before on F1 2021. But Verstappen, I think, is going to be a sitting duck. He does go defensive, but straight around the outside of our teammate we go there. And 2-1-2. File back into formation down towards Tom 1. Now we've got to try and pull out a gap over these next few laps, but we are on the optimum strategy here. Things have suddenly turned around and they're looking pretty good. There we go then. Both Mercedes trying to do some very, very different strategies to myself and Max Verstappen there. They've already both boxed maybe for the last time here in Bahrain. If they're going on to a fresh set of mediums once more, they should be able to see the car through to the checkered flag. But we're just trying to pull out a little bit of a gap over our teammate Verstappen there as much as I want to sort of help him along. Now, we don't really want to give him too much dirty air either. Still a little bit unsure about reliability at the start of this season. Already three mechanical failures for three different power units. Oh, so there we go. Verstappen into Max the pits in the as pit. well. Max in the pit. So he might be able to get the undercut on us by the time we box in in probably about 10 laps time. We are just trying to hang on firm at the moment as now all those guys on the mediums re-slot back up into P2 down. There's Giovinazzi still hanging on in that Alpine. Where has this pace come from? For, well, both driver and car then, neither of them I expected to deliver in the way they have so far today, but perhaps, yeah, this track might just suit their car. Great work. That's a new fastest lap of the race. There we go. As we start lap 36, still pushing, still finding time at the moment. This car is just absolutely on rails at this stage of the day. And now we've got George Russell and Carla Sainz into the box as well. So Ricardo, I think, was the only other man that pit with us when, of course, we dived into the box with Sergio Perez as well under the safety car. And he's now 25 seconds behind and has pit 
So two and two mopes. We're back into one two formation here. So we just run a little bit wide over the curbing. Mercedes still three four. But now we can monitor the gap to Max, see if he's going to get the undercut on us. Probably going to box in at the end of lap 41, pretty much the middle of, well, ever since the safety car came in, pretty much the middle of the laps remaining. Um, yeah, Verstappen, the gap started just ever so slightly to come back down. But I mean, yeah, over the last sort of 10 laps, it's been about half a second. So really, I don't think it's going to create too much of a swing in the Grand Prix. And of course, yeah, when we come back out, we're going to be on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. So even if we do re-emerge behind our new Dutch teammate, don't think we're going to be re-emerging behind him for very long in this Grand Prix. But this thing on these soft tyres is just absolutely hung on. It's honestly felt better over a proper stint than the mediums did. I, I don't know how, I don't know why. The tyres have seemed to have lasted longer and have been a lot quicker. Fuel burn, I'm sure, is helping that a whole lot. But yeah, at the moment, we are just now with Perez out of the picture, just in complete control of the Bahrain Grand Prix with about a quarter of the race still left to run here as we head up the hill. Yeah, like I said, going to dive it in at the end of this one. Trying not to over push the car too much though. What we're going to probably do is come out, go for one more fastest lap and then really just try and bring the thing home. But still, always just in the back of my mind is that little question about reliability. But out of the final corner then, down towards the start finish line. We're going to box it in the end of lap 41. Just, only just get the car slowed down into the pit lane, but are we going to re-emerge ahead or behind of our teammate Max Verstappen? That is still, of course, the real question in this GP. I think it is going to be pretty close, actually, between myself and the Dutchman, but I think we might just do it. Exit, exit Three now. second stop isn't particularly good as we head out of the pit lane. Here comes Max Verstappen, though, heading back down towards Turn 1, and to we are now. going to re-emerge then. Still in the lead of this Bahrain Grand Prix. And now, yeah, 16 laps to go. I think we just got to bring this thing home. We have, I mean, we've been absolutely carried for the second time in three races there. Nikita Mazepin has completely opened up a race for us. But yeah, I mean, now, surely, we're just going to go for one more push lap. And this should be, touch wood, nothing can stop us between us winning this race. Right, lap 43 then for 43,000 subscribers. Let's see. What sort of lap time we can set here? Going to use a load of battery out of the final corner as we head back down over the start finish line. Then purple second and final sector of the last lap as well here. And as you head in towards turn one, you want to be trying to pick out the 100 meter board. Breaking just before that. Get it slowed down all the way into first gear there. Just skim the curbs on the inside there. It just allows the front end to rotate through a little bit more. And use all the curb on the exit of turn two there. Up the hill, want to be finding just before the curbing. At the 100 meter board again. Third gear there. Short shift back up to fourth. And really let the car run wide on the exit. Use all of that curb. Five and six down into fifth gear there. Back up into sixth through the second part. And then again using all the curb on the exit. Purple first sector there. All the way down to second gear for the hairpin. And then really modulate the throttle on the exit. Next couple of corners. Really got to try and get it tipped in seventh gear on the way in. Try to avoid any front locking. And then attack the curbs through the middle part there. Ran a little bit wide on the exit. But really nice pickup off the corner there. Next turn, again, 100 meter board. That's what you want to be looking for. Breaking about 80 though, this time around. They actually got a little bit too early on the anchors and didn't carry the speed as we head now up the hill. Completely flat, a slight blend of throttle as you get towards the second part there. And then again, just breaking down fourth gear. They use all the curbs on the exit. Purple middle sector as well as we head down in towards the final corner. I'm going to be breaking it just after you go over that curb in third gear on the way in fourth gear when you get to the apex just to allow yourself a little bit less wheel spin on the exit use the rest of your batteries you head up towards the line a 24 6 there we go that should easily be fastest lap when all is said and done here and that is in my eyes a pretty good lap here of sakia let's just get this thing to the flag i suppose I'm about to start lap 50 then of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Just thought I'd check in, sort of say hello, see if you're all still awake here late on in the afternoon. But eight laps to go then from Sakia. Remember, at the start of this one, we were last down at turn one. That safety car completely changed the face of this race. And then we've just got so confident with the car since then as well. Red Bull, that, uh, yeah, Checo in that Red Bull is certainly, though, still a very, very big concern this year. I'm sure he's going to be rapid on a lot of occasions. It's a bit like real life 2022, that Red Bull. They've got a lot of pace in it, but it's just not reliable where they need it, as that was a bit scary. 
got to keep our head down. Don't do anything stupid later on in the afternoon, Matt. Well, here we are then, about to start the last lap here from the Bahrain Grand Prix. And what a way to start Season 7 of this My Team career mode then. Like I said, we got very, very lucky with the safety car. I'm not going to argue against that today. It completely changed the shape of the race. Your final lap, final lap of the race. I think, though, you know, definitely we could have still sort of been, you know, around those Mercedes had, you know, we not had the safety car, had it not really bunched up the field, everything like that, and effectively given us a free pit stop in this GP. But Verstappen, he's still looking rapid. We've saved 10 laps worth of fuel over the course of the afternoon as well there. But yeah, Verstappen's certainly looking rapid as well. Sergio Perez in that Red Bull, he is going to be one to watch out for as well over the course of this year. Don't think we've seen the best of George Russell so far. And Mercedes, as always, is still certainly right there as well. So a lot. We're going to see how this season unfolds. There are 23 races. But it is going to be our first 100% race win on F1 2021 as well. So absolutely love to see that at the end of the day. They completely controlled the pace after we got back into the lead there. And yeah, just a double stint on the soft compound tyres. It just worked super well with this car. The tyres have hung on really well, nicely as well, over the course of the afternoon. And as well... No one has been lapped here, which is kind of insane to think about. You know, Haas last year, they would have probably been lapped before the first safety car and then definitely lapped again over the course of this race. So the fact that everyone has remained on the lead lap shows just how much closer the performance is right the way down the field. But out of the final corner then, we are going to come through to win the first race of Season 7 here in Sakia. You absolutely love to see it. Fantastic. You've won the Grand Prix. You can't fault the performance on the track today. A well-deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. Mr. Monaco takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. The owner drivers' team moved to the top of the table. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the Bahrain Grand Prix. And from 16th and 9th on the grid, we still made it work and walked away with a 1-2 there. And a maximum 44 points to kickstart the year. You absolutely love to see it there. Myself and Max Verstappen, like we said, tried to build a bit of a super team for this final run here on F1 2021. And yeah, myself and the Dutchman, I don't think that's going to be the last 1-2 we get over the course of the campaign there. But 16th. Fastest lap, race victory. It wasn't quite the perfect weekend. You know, that mistake in qualifying still hurts a little bit, but I'm sure we can push that behind us and focus on the next upcoming races there. Sonoda rounds out the podium, just eight tenths ahead of his new teammate Lance Stroll. George Russell, P5 in his first outing for Red Bull. I think we're going to see a whole lot more for him there ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Antonio Giovinazzi, yeah, Alpine, scoring six points there when I didn't think they'd score a single point all year. A very, very good job done by the Italian ahead of Sainz and Leclerc and Daniel Ricciardo there. After all of that, 
Guan Yu Zhou did end up beating his teammate Lando Norris. So yeah, Lando had an absolute disaster after a very, very good start to the afternoon. They are then followed up by both Aston Martins and then both Alfa Romeos, Latifi, Giotto, Schwartzman, and then yeah, Perez, Mazepin, and Callum Eilat all not making it through to the checkered flag. Of course, Drivers' Championship exactly the same as those race results there and constructors-wise immediately. We've got 17-point lead over Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship there. Red Bull still in P3 ahead of McLaren and Alpine and Ferrari tied there. Only six teams scoring points in the opening race weekend of the year. But thank you all so much for watching this video as well. If you have enjoyed it, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. Now trying to hit 50,000 subscribers so you can help us get one step closer. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But yeah, we'll be back very, very soon as we head back to China, Shanghai, it's going to be an interesting one. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.